First off, I am sick and tired of waiting for this 14 gallon tank to cycle. So we're gonna move the long fin clownfish today. And the ICP test results are in, all the way from Germany. Does anybody else think it's crazy that we have to send our samples halfway around the world to get the results? <laughs> Green hair algae update time. Here is a bunch of pictures or videos, whatever I can find, of the green hair algae in the Fluville reef tank. You can see it was pretty bad. Some areas had a ton of green hair algae, others didn't have quite as much. So now I'm gonna take you over and I'm gonna show you the green hair algae today. Let's do this. Here is the green hair algae update today. It's pretty much gone except for a couple small spots. So for those of you who are struggling with green hair algae, let me just tell you what I did to get rid of the green hair algae. The first thing I did was I took off the automatic feeder. I realized I was adding way too much food to the tank just because I didn't want to feed all the time. So I took that off. Then I switched from pellet food to frozen food. So now these fish twice a day only get frozen food, which has way less fillers and probably way less phosphates. Then I went and I changed the filter. The only filter this tank has is the sponge filter. And I changed that filter now every single day instead of every other day. I did a ton of manual removal. I probably had to manually remove large clumps four or five times over the last few months. And I let it grow quite a bit before I removed it because it was easier to grab onto. And then the less phosphates there were in the tank because of the other mitigation measures I did, it would pull out quite a bit easier. Then I used a brush and I used a toothbrush to scrub as much as I could when I couldn't pull it off. I also used a turkey baster from time to time. And the turkey baster was super helpful because a lot of the algae was growing in these crevices where there was just detritus and food and fish waste. And so I would blow all of that junk out there, let it get picked up by the MP10 and out into the filter. And then the last thing I did recently was I did a seven day treatment of razor. Now you can see here that the razor treatment did bring back some of the cyanobacteria, but it's not terrible. I was watching my phosphate and nitrate levels during this and the phosphates and nitrates actually never zeroed out. So there's enough in there. But if the phosphates especially were to zero out during the razor treatment, I had a little bottle of PO4 that I could add in a few drops just to raise that up a little bit. I bought this, I don't know, two weeks ago now. It's just one of these, these nice reactors. And I bought it for bio pellets. I have actually never had a bio pellet reactor and I've always stayed away from them because I've tried to like not completely deplete my NO3 levels. But this tank right here, the 40 gallon breeder tank, which is the frag tank, I can't seem to get the nitrates down below 20 parts per million. And that's mainly a result of the fact that there's no live rock in there, right? The only colonizing space there is are some ceramic bio balls in the sump and then a bright will aquatics brick and that's pretty much it now the po4 the phosphate issue is dealt with i use a small amount of gfo and then i have macroalgae in a refugium and that keeps my po4 i don't know somewhere around 0 0.05 to 0 0.10 but even with water changes and switching the feeding from pellets to frozen, which I thought would help a lot, and changing out the filter sock every single day, and doing a wetter skim, I thought that might be sufficient, but I don't think it is. So let's go test it real quick, see what the nitrate levels are at. If they're anything near 20, then all of my mitigation factors just aren't working, and then we're gonna have to install this bad boy to bring those levels down. Five minutes, close enough to five minutes. Let's check. That to me looks darker than 10, right? Let's check 25. 
Yeah, that's pretty dang close to 25, don't you think? So we're gonna have to install the bio pellet reactor. Since I've never done bio pellets before, I didn't really know how to best do it. So I watched some videos, and I watched one by Mellows Reef, Mark Levinson, and it was super helpful and gave me all sorts of tips. For example, you're not supposed to use the sponge because the sponges will get super gunked up by the bio pellets. And then you just make sure you have this little top plate on there. And when you tumble the bio pellets, you don't want the bio pellets to touch the top because it'll gunk that up and then there'll be no flow. And then as soon as you have no flow in here, they will turn disgusting and, and rot or whatever it is. He also said one really important thing to do is to let them soak for about 24 hours so that they won't float to the top because if they float to the top of the container, they're gonna gunk up the little mesh thingy there. He also suggested why not add some Microbacter 7 to help seed it. So that's what we're gonna do. I think we can figure this out here. Let's see here, I'm gonna use a cup. This is two cups evidently. I'm gonna use a cup. Okay, one cup. I already poured some in there. And then I started, no! Be careful your pets. You don't want your pets to get this stuff, okay? So here we go. I got a funnel now. See, I'm getting smarter. Funnel. Ah, uh, it's better. Okay, one cup. Place inside. Let's grab some gigantic thing of Microbacter 7. Look at that. The eye water, just enough to cover it. They pretty much don't float already, so I'm just gonna leave them soaking in here for just a little while to soak up maybe some of that microbacter, and then we'll install this bad boy. I hear it takes a few weeks to kick in, so I don't know. I'm taking you on my journey, everybody, because I've never done this before. Got everything installed pretty well using that CJ Synchro pump, which works fantastic. Then just the standard tubing, the ball valve, and I've done it in such a way that I'm making sure the output line is gonna go right near the protein skimmer input line because if you don't know how bio pellets work, they don't actually get rid of nitrates. They basically just feed the bacteria that is then pulled out by your skimmer. Ooh -wee. Look at those bio pellets tumbling. Successful install. I had to do a little rearrangement of the compartment. I had to get rid of the bio brick because nothing else would fit in here. Look at that. I think that's gonna be perfect. I don't want it to touch the top, so it doesn't appear to be touching the top, but I may have to tune it down just a little bit right there, but look, I mean, look how far away that is from the top. It's not even close at this point, so. We're gonna test every few days, the hopes in the next month or two, getting the nitrates down to three to five parts per million. This is a learning experiment for me because I don't wanna take the nitrates down to zero. So I'm gonna be watching and adjusting the amount I have in there over time. And so if the nitrates fall all the way to zero, then maybe next time we'll try a half a cup. So it'll be a little bit of an experiment, but overall, I mean, I think, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how it goes, right? The ICP test results are in. I looked at them and I watched a couple videos. So I'm like, is this bad? Is this good? I don't know. Let's jump into the computer real quick and you tell me if I should be worried or not. First up, let's check the RO water. That one's a little bit more simple. Okay, obviously no salinity, no carbon hardness, but let's see the things that are out of whack here. Silicon, all right, see this here? You're supposed to have zero, zero silicon, and I have 231. And I went online, and I'm like, is that high? Is that bad? I don't think it's great, but I don't think it's terrible. I don't know, what do you guys think? Put a comment down below. But I know the cause of it, and I'll show you that in a second. Zinc, 1.88, well, I don't even know what that is, something per liter, I have no idea what that measurement is. Is that low? <laughs> <laughs> I, I have no idea. Here's the ICP RODI. It just has everything. So what? Silicon and zinc. That's it. So I can fix a silicon problem. The problem is, is I haven't changed my DI resin in forever and it's all turned brown. So I think that's a problem. So we'll fix that in a second. Clownfish harem tank. This one, I was surprised actually at how okay it was. And there was one or two issues, but nothing too bad. So here we go. Let's look at it. All right, moving down. Magnesium is high. I have no idea why the magnesium's that high. I have never dosed magnesium in that in that tank ever. So I have no idea why that, I mean, obviously that's not a problem, but I have no idea why that's high. Sulfur's low, but it doesn't look too low, right? I'm not worried about that. Major elements and then bromine appears to be a little bit high. So I'd say for the major elements, it's pretty much a wash. Everything looks okay to me. So I don't think there's like a major element problem that's been causing the clownfish harem tank to suffer. Minor elements, iodine. Okay, see, I knew the iodine was gonna be low. And that's what, half of what it should be. 
And I can't remember if I took this sample after I started dosing the trace elements or the trace colors from Red Sea. So I'm gonna keep watching that and I've been dosing that. So I think I'll order another test kit here in a few weeks and see if that's come back up. I also stopped dosing carbon recently because I didn't need it anymore. So I think that should help that level as well. But else we got mol denim mol denim I don't know. I have no idea what that is. It seems low. I don't know. I don't see anything other, anything else in here. No manganese. Is that bad? Iron? Iron's high. I mean, ooh, look how high iron. Why would iron be high? Could that have something to do with, with my RODI filtration? Take a peek here. Here is the list of everything that's topsy-turvy. Magnesium, sulfur, bromine, bromine. I'm not worried about any of those. Tin is high. I, I don't know. I, I look at this and one, I don't really know what I'm looking at, but two, nothing looks crazy bad. Nothing looks crazy bad. If you guys notice something that you're like, oh, Matthew, you aren't paying attention. That doesn't look right. Put, put a comment down below and say, hey, you should really be worried about this and why. But overall, that being said, I, I really don't think the ATI ICP test kit has shown anything that would be causing a problem with my anemones. So that's good. I'm glad we can at least cross that off the list, but that means we have to keep continuing to think about what the issues with the anemones might be. And I have some ideas. Let's just go change the DI resin and then we'll continue on with the gallery updates. I got quite a bit more to do today. So here's the beast. This thing's awesome. This clean water by Marine Depot. I have so many stages on it now. What I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And look at this, look at this. This is supposed to be blue, mind you, blue. And it is exhausted, totally exhausted. This one over here, look, maybe it has a little bit left down here. And that one's totally exhausted. And I think what, what the problem is, is yeah, okay, I'm still getting zero TDS up here. But the issue is this has all the silicates it can because inside with DI resin, there's cation and anion resins and they each hold something different, right? So while I'm still getting zero TDS, I think the problem is it is full of silicates and so it won't hold any more of that. I mean, look how brown they are. They're definitely ready to be changed. seen this before this is super random and it wasn't gonna be in the video but I was like what the heck is that and it's the hermit crab and yeah I've seen videos of hermit crabs transfer between one and another but he came out of his last shell and he couldn't find a home so he was just wandering around the aquarium hanging out uh, and I was just like wow his body I just I got such a good look at his body which I thought was super cool he wasn't near any any sort of empty shell so I eventually ended up having to go and find him a shell and then he went right in but yeah I just thought I'd share that with you guys you guys know anything off here in the harem tank a few days ago I looked down here and the sea urchin had sloughed off all of its white moving feet. And I'm not exactly sure why. Everything in here seems to be fine. The nitrate levels aren't high. There seemed to be enough food. The only thing I could think of is it was the razor treatment. I did use a bit of razor on this tank to try to help combat that, that algae problem. It's not green hair algae, it's just, just general algae. And you can see here the remains of the spines so I am 0 for 2. This guy lasted a lot longer, like three months. The first one lasted one day, so. Oh well, I'm not gonna try again for a little while. Wait till the tank stabilizes a bit more before I get another urchin. It's time. Today we're gonna move the long thin clowns over. Let's test it. The ammonia's at zero. I think we still have quite a bit of nitrites and nitrates. So we'll just do like a 90% water change and then move them over. Ammonia. 
Uh, it's not registering too much. It's a little bit though. Not bad, do a water change, take that down. Number two, nitrites. I'm gonna be really high. Look at that. Ooh, super high. And last but not least, nitrates. Also pretty high. But we are just gonna do a big water change, add the fish, and then do water changes as necessary. I wish it was totally done cycling, but it's not. But since the ammonia is down, I think it's safe to add the long fin clowns. I'm trying to fake out the long thin clown. See my little secret in there? I have had and moved around that black net for the last two to three hours. And I'm being like, hey, no, it's your friend. It's not gonna catch you and make you panicked and make you nearly suffocate and transfer you to another tank. No, no, no. It's just a part of the scenery. That's what I'm going for. We're gonna see if it works. Got the first one, let's bring them over, ready? Again for the anemone update, we got four nems to talk about. Last time we updated the tank in the hospital tank over here, we had the watermelon anemone. And that's now gone, and I was finally able to capture this. This green anemone I got from Live Aquaria a long time ago now, several months. Immediately got in, lost its tentacles, and is wandering around shrinking, 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 shrinking. You can see a few of the tentacles have started to grow back, but it is so unhappy, and it wasn't even really holding on anymore, so I decided I'm going to move it over here. I don't think it has any bacterial infection, but I'm just going to give it an easy life over here and see if it'll come back. I, I doubt it will come back, but I'm going to give it a shot. And then number two, are those, <gasps> look, are those bubbles? Are those bubbly tips for the first time in, I don't even know how long, six months? I would say that this bubble tip anemone is actually getting bigger and improving. It's moved around, but it's settled in there. Look at that long extension. And those are bubble tips. So this one's getting better. That's awesome. Anemone number two and three are the genetic brethren. And look, oh my goodness, look at how bubbly this one is. This one is doing fantastic. It's not showing its stomach at all. And even this little tiny one right next to it is noticeably, noticeably bigger. I'll try to find some clips to play right now of these even uh, a few weeks ago just to show you how stringy and small they were. And to show you that this guy didn't, had like almost no tentacles. And now look at that. So maybe even that little guy will make a comeback. And the last anemone update, which is generally speaking good news, except for right now, the watermelon. It has looked like this for half the day, the total deflate. See it there? But other than today, it's been fantastic. 
it stayed right there. It seems to be thriving. So I'm gonna keep watching it. I'm not gonna pull it out anymore and treat it because it has looked so good. And plus it's already gotten 10 days of antibiotic treatment. That's just, I'm just not gonna put it through that again. So either at this point now, it's gonna survive or it's not gonna survive. And we'll have to see whether or not that antibiotic treatment work with the Cipro because this is the only anemone that's still spewing out the contents of its stomach. But typically it's been puffing right back up except for today. So I'll keep you guys in the loop. Well, that's pretty much all I got for you today, except one more big piece of news. This hospital tank is gonna have to find a new home within a couple weeks, maybe within a month, maybe less than that, because I was speaking with Marine Depot this week and they have found a company to generously sponsor the new macroalgae seahorse tank build. I'm not gonna give you any more details until it comes, but a new tank should be shipped shortly and it is going to be a beaut and my first attempt ever at a macroalgae tank and then once I get macroalgae down we're going to add seahorses so if you have any interest stay tuned to these Tuesday videos because we are going to show you the good and the bad my mistakes and my successes as I attempt to and succeed in my first macroalgae seahorse tank until next Tuesday everybody be well happy reefing we'll see you next time Thank you.